Hi, my beautiful Scorpios. Welcome to your reading for November 2024. Hard to believe it's November already. Um, I want to say happy birthday to those celebrating a birthday. Um, my daughter Jen is a Scorpio, October 29th, and I know quite a few of you share her birthday. And my brother, who is November 6th, and I know quite a few of you share his birthday. So both of such loving souls. So I know your loving souls. Um, actually, Scorpio is one of the favorite readings that I like to do. Um, always so interesting. And it just always piques my mind, piques my interest, and piques my intuition. So with all that being said, this is going to be for Scorpio, sun, moon, rising. Um, some of you are intuitively guided to the reading. Thank you for paying attention to your intuition. Uh, you could certainly be in love with the Scorpio, platonically, romantically. And if that's the case, remember that I do read through my spirit guides who connect to your guides. So they know you're here. Um, and your guides will get a message to you any way they can. So don't be surprised if you yourself receive some messages. All right, Scorpio. So we're going to use um, a few different decks in this reading. I did bring out the Romance Angels, but we'll see if we need those. If, if we need them, we'll bring them in. We are going to start the reading, uh, the readings for November. You're the first reading, by the way, with the um, Major Arcanas again. So just to get a little bullet point to the reading, something I just love to do. I am also going to do opposite readings again. So Scorpio, your opposite would be Taurus. Their reading will be done next. And then we move on. You know what I mean? Then we'll go into Sagittarius. It goes, and their opposite is Gemini. I just, like, I started this back in September. And I just love, um, I love how they connect. So, you know, our opposite sign is definitely energy we can learn from. It doesn't have to mean the person. It's just the energy of Taurus. Uh, it, it can help balance you. And that's why I'm doing the opposite readings. So anyways, we're going to use the major arcanas. We will start with those. Um, we are also going to use Mother Mary, not use her, but take Mother Mary's words of wisdom. And, you know, this time I think I'm going to do it at the end of the reading. And, um, yeah, let's do it at the end of the reading this time. We're going to use the Gilda Chiro to clarify. It's just one of my favorite decks to clarify with. So let's put it over there. And for your main spread, we're going to use the Light Sears Chiro. The Light Sears. All right. So let's go ahead and open up the reading. I'm going to give the Major Arcanas a couple shuffles. This is a great time just to like calm your mind. Certainly feel free to ask your spiritual team for signs of confirmation throughout the reading. Sometimes the whole reading just will make complete sense to you. Um, okay. And, um, other times it, get been, it can be bits and pieces. So trust your intuition. That's the main thing. Trust your intuition. Okay, I'm going to take more than one. I don't know why I'm hiding it. Let's turn it around. Well, hello, star. You hope she dreams your wishes. Um, now, I have to say, I don't read these as people. But this is Aquarius' is major arcana. Um, but other than that, we're just reading the energy. So this is about manifesting some type of dream, wish, or hope into your reality. I like that. I like starting with the star. You know, Scorp uh, Scorpio, I feel like you have been, <clears throat> what's the word I want to use, like working on yourself. Um... Focusing on yourself in um, almost like a spiritual way. And I feel, I feel like it's really paying off. And I'm just picking that up intuitively. But I'm also thinking about your previous readings. 
All right. We have, well, hello, Destiny. Next to the star. So whatever the star, again, a dream, a wish, your hope. This is something it feels like it's meant to be. You know, I often feel with this image, it's like blind faith. So just maybe having faith that, you know, you're putting an intention out there or more than one intention and the universe is picking it up. But again, it can look different than what you expect, but it only be better. All right. We have the Hierophant. Well, there's your opposite. So card of Taurus. This is about your belief system, your faith. Keeping hope alive. You know, it is a five, so five speaks about change. It may ask you just to ask yourself, you know, am I living life according to my terms, my morals, my standards? Am I lowering my vibration to be with others? And because I feel like you yourself have definitely raised your vibration, I feel like it is important that anyone that follows let's just say when this wheel spins it kind of feels like um something new well it is something new but also something destined something blue <laughs> and then we have the hangman slow down you move too fast don't you want the night to last all right let's put these away so the hangman, a little bit of a pause in the action. Um, actually, let me bring the lid down also. There we go. So, hangman is seeking wisdom. Like spiritual wisdom. Tell me what to do on these next steps within this human plane, on this physical plane. You know, <clears throat> I feel like because the Hierophant is looking over at the hangman, it's asking you a question. You know, or again, are you living life according to your terms? Or have you been living life according to someone else's terms? I feel like you're reclaiming something here. Oh, excuse me one second. Okay. Sorry, I'm back. I had a little knock at the door. I feel like every time I do your reading, I get a knock at the door. Come and knock at my door. All right, let's bring the light seers in. And um, let's see what, what wish is coming true. Let's see what is part of your destiny. And I don't even mind the hangman being here because I feel like whatever the hangman, like whatever answers you're seeking i definitely feel like you are going to receive them um i love how the hierophant is also looking over at the hangman uh, excuse me one more second okay sorry about that again a knock at the door all right um sam just got home from the doctors all right so let's bring the light seers in Let's go ahead and give them a cut, introduce them into the reading. Okay. All right, we start with the Six of Pentacles. Let's get the first line out, then we'll talk about them. We have Page of Wands. I like her image. She's like just throwing her wand out wherever it lands is where I go. She's also my little risk taker. And I kind of love that she's coming under the wheel because I feel like, um, Maybe that's why it's saying, like, I feel like someone's spilling, uh, 
spinning that wheel with like blind faith and the page of wands again my risk taker like i could see her just saying i'm going to spin the wheel and wherever it lands is where i go all right look at this two pages back to back page of wands page of swords i think i'm going to take five across Interesting how your cards are coming out one by one. We have the Five of Swords. So we have the Five of Swords that is underneath the Hierophant, which is also five. Let's just get one more, and then I, I, I want to talk about them already. But And then we have the Emperor. The Emperor. Um, Aries Major, Major, Aries Major Arcana. So the Emperor that's mirroring the Six of Pentacles. All right, let's talk about this before we move on. So first, I feel like we have to look at this Five of Swords. Um, another five, coming under a five. One is speaking about your faith, your hopes, your morals. And it's interesting because I feel like this is the opposite. This is where I may be questioning things. Um, you can certainly talk about dealing with like toxic energy, toxic people. Again, I feel like you're looking for a change. I definitely feel like you're, you're, you want some type of wish to come true. And this may require you to like take a moment and just kind of look around, like look around in your life. Ask yourself, like, you know, who am I hanging out with? Um, like, where is my thought system at? Do I believe that, you know, this wheel, destiny, can really produce this wish? In the Five of Swords energy, certainly could be someone who, you know, you may have a certain wish that you really want to manifest, and you could certainly have someone who is trying to talk you out of it. But I don't think you... I don't think you should listen. And then we move into the emperor. And, um, you know, the emperor, it can certainly talk about like business ownership. It can talk about um, it's a father figure. Um, and some of you, you know, I know some of you are single moms. So, you know, and I know some of you are single dads. So I feel like it relates to either or. You know, like if I'm single, I am maybe the breadwinner type of energy. Um, some of you, I feel like this could talk about promotions. Like I feel, I feel good with this energy. I feel good with the emperor, even though he is coming next to the five of swords. I don't feel like, I don't feel like it's the emperor's energy that's causing like any type of toxicity. I feel like it's more about something you want to do, something you want to create. Um, and for some of you, it could be like your own business. You know, the emperor is someone that we look up to. The emperor is someone who, um, well, listen, it can talk about like, if I really want something to come to fruition, it might serve me to make a plan, you know, to go by a plan. Doesn't mean I have to go by it step by step by step. But like maybe you have different ideas, writing them down. And again, I feel like there could be energy around you who would maybe even try to talk you out of the things that you want to create, but don't don't allow them because I feel the strength of you in this reading. Like I feel that you feel strong. Doesn't mean everything is right because you know there are some changes that I feel like you want. Um, but I feel like these changes are of the light. And therefore, you know, let's speak about that for a second, because I do feel like these changes are of the light. And when that happens, you know, naturally, let's say that I'm doing something that, um, I don't know, that is coming from the light, you know what I mean? Like a higher vibrational type energy. Um, Definitely people can come out of the woodwork 
and, you know, try to talk you out of it. But again, the emperor is someone who, I don't think you can talk the emperor, and I feel like you're, you are the emperor here. So I don't feel like you can really talk the emperor out of something. You know, the emperor is someone who has gained a lot of wisdom due to the experiences within one's life. It's like the things that I've overcome. And then I feel like the emperor is someone who wants to help others then to also overcome. You know, it's like the emperor is seeking this wisdom. And the emperor being mirrored by the six of pentacles. Let's talk about that for a second. Six of Pentacles is that fine art of give and take. Um, it's really unbalanced energy, but it's unbalanced only to a point like it talks about the fairness within giving and receiving and being open to both. You know, I could definitely see where you you could easily give, but are you able, like, are you allowing yourself to receive or Let's put it a different way. Let's say you're giving. You're giving of your time. You're giving of your money. Um, your wisdom. But in return, you're getting nothing back. You're getting, you know, um, resistance. So this could ask you to ask yourself that, you know, um, if, if I am a giver, which you are, naturally are you also allowing yourself to receive i definitely feel like there's a change that you want to see, you want to see happen and by the way i feel like as this change and again it feels like a wish as it starts to manifest it would make sense that those because again this feels like it's definitely coming out of light like from the light uh, and to me, that just means that, well, first of all, you may have um, brought in your spiritual team. Help guide me. Remember, the hangman is seeking wisdom. You know, the wheel is waiting to be spun. And I feel like once the hangman finds the wisdom that he's seeking, which he will, which is you, by the way, um, then I feel like then I'm going to spin that wheel. So I feel like if anyone has been thinking about like their own business or, um, you know, you're starting to get some great ideas and epiphanies, this is about then putting them to use. Again, the emperor, it, it may serve you to make a plan. Hmm. Some of you, you know, it, it does kind of feel like someone or let's just say someone or people are being like faded out. But I feel like as you evolve, those who don't, the universe naturally wants them to fade away. Our human self is what pulls them back in. You know, it kind of remind, reminds me of like the devil's energy, temptation. And even though maybe I know something's not good for me, I still want it. I still pull it back in until until you really know. You know, that's just a human, that's the human side of us. No judgment on that. Um, you know, the Page of Swords definitely feels, and she's right in the middle of the reading right now, definitely feels like she's receiving epiphanies, ideas. You know, she's she's reading from this book. And it's like this book is igniting her intuition. Now, I say a book, but I feel like some of these ideas, listen, something could have piqued my interest towards something. But from, from that point on, I feel like it's trusting your intuition. Again, it looks like, like a lot of ideas, a lot of epiphanies. And that could be another reason why the Emperor's here is like, make a plan. Make a plan. You know, you may be uncomfortable with moving or let's say, interesting. Interesting. Okay, so different deck. 
And you know why it's so interesting when it, when this happens in these readings is because I shuffle your cards. I shuffle everybody's cards before I do a reading for at least 15 minutes. And um, I make sure all the cards in the upright, you know, that way if they come in reverse, I know they're reversed. I know they were meant to be reversed. But I find this kind of interesting. So I don't know when it happened, how it happened. But here's the wheel again. So I'm going to take it. But I'm going to put it right here. So interesting, now we have two wheels. Destiny. Can't talk about two different wishes coming true. Can't talk about two people who are on the same will, you know, both in a destined time. Come on. Hello, will again. Wow. It's like, will you or won't you? You know, this feels destined. This feels like this could even be something that your soul, like a seed of intention that your soul or even two souls planted before they even came into this, this lifetime. And now is the time. Now is the time. Some of you could have been feeling like you're feeling like it's time for something or you're feeling you know, like, I just get this feeling something's going to change. Something good. Though I feel like you have a lot to say about that also. Interesting. You know, the wheel coming under the Six of Pentacles. I feel like what he's saying is, first and foremost, you've learned that fine art of give and take. Right, you you are very compassionate and very easily you can give, you know, of your love, of your time, even of your money. But now it feels like those that I give to who are maybe using that, using my uh, generosity, my caring heart, um, taking advantage of that. I don't feel like they have. They can do that any longer. I don't know if I've ever seen three wills in the same reading. And I have been reading for, God, a long time. All right. Interesting. We have the Nine of Wands under the Page of Wands. And then we have the King of Wands under the Page of Swords. So the Nine of Wands, this is exactly what I was feeling. This is the energy of really reflecting back, um, you know, at least the last chapter. Thinking, you know, remembering that we run in like nine year cycles. Um, and now I can be reflecting back on your whole life, but I'm looking back on purpose. I'm looking, you know, I, I'm, I'm learning who I am. I feel like in the energy of the nine of wands, the reflection back it, what it's really showing you is how strong you are now. You know, I call the person in the nine of wands, my spirit warrior. You can see like she's busting out of her clothes. That's because of the spiritual muscles that she's gaining. Right next to the, the wheel. Some of you, I feel like the hangman was you maybe putting a hold on something. And this reflection, you know, this reflection would will do you a world of good, I'm telling you. And again, it's like looking back, but not judging yourself. Like not with a negative lens. Look at it with a positive lens. Okay, so I've been through some shit. But look what I've overcome. 
look how I've grown. You know, for some of you, it's like, okay, I've been loving, um, I've been nurturing, but I haven't been, haven't been receiving. You know, I feel like I, it kind of feels like being used. Um, like someone feels like they're taking advantage of your, your lovely hearts. So we get the King of Wands, which can be Leo, um, Sagittarius, Aries. Coming under the Page of Swords. All right, well, let's see what comes next to him. I like how this king has this line behind him. It's reminding me of the strength card. So that tells me if this king is someone, let's just say, that's new. Because it is following the wheel. This is probably someone who has overcome some things in their life. Um, just like where I feel like in the Nine of Wands is about you reflecting. But then... Then closing that chapter because the page of wands is throwing her wand and she's throwing it at the wheel like again wherever it lands is where I go. I also wouldn't be surprised if um you start getting some hmm what's the word I want to say? Like for some of you, it could be collaboration. Someone giving you some ideas on how you could do something. We have the Eight of Swords. It did show in reverse though. And I feel like I'm going to leave it in reverse. Coming into that Five of Wands. <clears throat> I'm sorry, the Five of Swords. That's where the toxicity lives. That's the house of toxicity. But remember, when you see Fives... It at least has the option of change. But we do have to make that change. So the Eight of Swords is that self-created prison. And that's where you put walls up. You know, trying to protect yourself. Um, but it is a facade. You know, I love this image because it's like your higher self looking at Let's just say your earthly self is like your spiritual being looking at your earthly being. Maybe even trying to reach you to say, you can get through this. You can get through this. You've been through so much more. You can get through this. So when, you know, and it's an eight. So eights to me stand about or speak about new beginnings. But. I like it in reverse because to me, it means you set yourself free. And connected to that five of swords. So who's ever carrying toxic energy, even if it's your own thoughts, you're setting yourself free. It totally makes sense with the wheel here three times. And I want to say congratulations, because that is major, major energy and major growth. And it only makes sense that the star would open up the reading because of that. It's like, all right, it's like life lesson learned. Look at this. Another. What the heck? This is the weirdest thing. And, you know, it's weird because this deck I know you can't see it, but it's, I have a table on the other side of me. And you know that old wooden box that has been handed down from generation to generation that I keep my tarot cards in? I used to keep it on the side here, but I don't know. Something made me move it. Um, I have that this deck over there, and the Gilded Tarot is always sitting on my desk. So how they got mixed, I don't know. Let's see what it says. All right, we have the Queen of Pentacles, my little psychic detective. And then we have the Knight of Wands. Passion, desire, movement, quickly. You know, I feel like this is good energy, though. 
this is you intentionally, you know, I want to say chasing a dream, but I don't feel like you have to chase it. I feel like it's just coming to you. You know, it just feels like the timing is right. So we'll put this over here with the other ones. Interesting. Let's put the wheel there and put the queen and the knight of wands. You know what that means to me also? That this wheel is moving faster than I even thought. And I have a feeling a lot of it had to do with the reversal of the eight of swords. Setting yourself free. You know, setting yourself free from what? Well, toxicity. And again, it can be limited ideas. But I feel like now you're receiving all kinds of epiphanies. And I feel you're open to it. I also feel like this king here, you know, at this moment right now, I kind of feel like this is someone who is helping in some way. This is someone who um, has overcome their own challenges. And now it feels like they're helping you in some way. We have the Five of Cups. But then look at this. We have the Knight of Pentacles. Beautiful. You know, this Knight of Pentacles is answering your dream. It, whatever the star is wishing, like whatever you're wishing upon on that in that on that star, the Knight of Pentacles is answering that. To me, this is guardian angel energy. And um, you know, the Knight of Pentacles has a few different messages. The first one is patience. You know, all good things in their right time. And that's what the Knight of Pentacles says. I come at the right time. What is the right time for the Knight of Pentacles? When they, when the Knight knows that you'll take this Pentacle that the Knight's bringing in. And remember, <clears throat> the Pentacle is something that's coming into your physical world. So it's tangible. And I kind of love this image because I don't feel like it's a one-time thing. I feel like one thing opens and then another thing opens. And it's like the night just keeps supplying, you know, whatever it may be. Interesting, it's coming over the Five of Cups. But again, first of all, you have set yourself free. You know, it doesn't mean like you don't have any worries, or, you know, normal worries but there's something here where i do feel like you're you put a close to it you know what i mean like it's 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 like you're you're realizing you want to live your life one way um but maybe you really haven't had the opportunity or maybe some changes needed to happen first that gets the ball really rolling because I feel like it's the Eight of Swords that gets everything really moving. Five of Cups. It is a five again. So you have three fives. It can talk about three different changes. Interesting because we have three wheels. And again, I don't feel like this night is a one-time thing. So I feel like you could potentially have three wishes coming true. Like you're finding that genie in a bottle. By the way, the Knight of Pentacles is mirroring the wheel. Well, and this Knight of Pentacles, which you hear me call often your guardian angel. It, it just knows the perfect time. And, you know, this is like you can trust this Knight. Again, I come at the right time, but just when you need me. So interesting is coming over the Five of Cups. So the Five of Cups can certainly talk about energy of someone that um, you miss. Five of Cups is when I'm kind of getting lost within my emotional house. You know, I'm focusing more on what I have lost instead of thinking, well, hey, what's yet to be gained? 
Knight of Pentacles is going to show you. Now, do I feel like this is talking about someone coming back into your life? Mm, I don't really feel it, feel that at this point, but we'll see. Um, but we do. Re but I do want you to remember in the Five of Cups, because it's a five and it's asking for change. And I feel like in the Five of Cups, the change is I just don't want to get lost in the things that have gone wrong. Maybe what I could really do instead is learn from them. Under, you know, and it can talk about understanding yourself on an emotional level. So when this person says, okay, I'm not going to focus on these things anymore. Well, there's two cups behind them. Can't really see it in this image. And to me, that is soulmate energy. This king may be a soulmate. And it doesn't even have to be romantic. Just someone's coming in at the right time. But again, I feel like you have three things happening here. All right, let's see what's on the bottom of the deck. Well, hello, Ten of Cups. Hello, Ten of Cups. Why can't I look? Look at that, the hangman right before it. Ten of Cups. House of Love. House of Harmony joy, laughter, you know, it's not the promise of, you know, life is just going to be a big old rose garden and rainbows from now on, but now you know how to handle, you know, anything that comes your way, and why can you handle it? Because you've been there. I feel like this is you learning so much from your past experiences, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Definitely feel like your energy is going to be hmm, happy. Like, I see you happy. All right. Let's go ahead and bring in the Gilded Tarot. Now, that would be wild if the light seer is mixed in here, but I can already tell it's not. I don't know. My mind's still blown because I'm telling you, I'm like so careful with my cards. And um, I don't even know the last time that I used the light seers. All right, let's give them a cut. And we're going to start at the beginning. But we are going to read it as a whole. <clears throat> so we're looking at the star, the wheel, the hierophant, and the hangman. But we're adding in the Six of Pentacles, the Page and uh, Page of Wands, Page of Swords, the Five of Swords, and then the Emperor. Well, hello, Ten of Pentacles. So I already felt that. Do you know, I already felt that um, your money sector was going to be doing much better. You know, this is reaping the harvest. First of all, it's reaping the harvest of your hard work. Don't forget, we have the Knight of Pentacles, who is bringing in, like, you know, is responsible for bringing in whatever the wheel, wherever the wheel lands is like what the Knight is bringing in. Well, this is a house of abundance. And hello, we have the Ten of Cups already. So the house of love, but also the house of abundance. We have the five of pentacles. Interesting. So from the ten of pentacles down to the five of pentacles. 
we have the hangman again. And then we have the four of pentacles. Let me grab a drink real quick. First of all, it's a lot of pentacles right there. You know, interesting that we opened up with the, well, with this deck, opened up with the Ten of Pentacles. Again, that House of Abundance. But it feels like immediately five of those pentacles are taken away. Five of Pentacles really speaks about something that happens like outside of your control. Um, and in the Five of Pentacles, I don't know that I really have the luxury to just, you know, like in the Five of Cups is where sometimes I'm just lying in my bed crying at night, you know, or crying during the day. Um, but in the Five of Pentacles, I feel like I have to keep going. I have to keep going. So some of you may have, um, let's just say in this Five of Swords, it could be could be an old relationship that ran its course, let's say. And, you know, from the 10 to the 5, some of you could have been living with someone. Certainly could have been married, though. You know, we don't have statistics of that yet. Some of you could have certainly be talking also about a move. You know, I feel like after a period of time of, like, not knowing, maybe not feeling secure, like, within your money, um, I feel like that security is coming your way. You know, again, three wishes. Well, one of those wishes seem to do with your money. And again, this Knight of Pentacles, what's he doing? He's bringing in these Pentacles. So don't be surprised, like, you know, let's say you lost a job. Well, I feel like what this is saying is the perfect situation will open up. I wanted to say job, but for some of you it could be your, you know, you're creating your own business now. And the hangman definitely using the wisdom. It's almost like the hangman is asking the wheel, is it time? Is a time for change? And if it is, which direction do I go? With well, the Page of Wands, is like, I'll go any direction that just feels right. But I mean that in a very, um, well, I want to say responsible way, but really what I, I mean it like, um, like coming from the light, like more understanding now. I felt like some of you, or I feel like some of you may have been dealing with some people who are completely ungrounded. And, you know, if that's the case, I could see it like having an effect in your life also. You know, it kind of looks like a bummer that we open with that Ten of Pentacles for the for the uh, clarifiers and immediately we lose five of those Pentacles. But I feel like that was then because I feel like you're going to recoup them. Probably just in a different way. And some of you could have lost job, but then the perfect job opens up. We have the Six of Swords. Okay, beautiful. Say beautiful because, first of all, it's coming over one of the hangmen. And it's also coming over um, the five of swords. So, you know, where you're setting yourself free in the eight of swords, the six of swords is pretty much that same energy. Um, because when you see six of swords, I feel like you have to go back one card and that would be the Five of Swords, because that's where the toxicity lies. Whatever it may be, it could be different things for different people. It could be people. 
It could be situational. But the Six of Swords means you're just no longer taking it. That you're moving away from it. And I feel like that's a little bit of why the Hierophant is here also. It's almost like my Scorpio wants to live this high vibrational life. And to do so, I'm starting to realize that that means that certain energies and certain people just won't fit with my new plan. With, you know, and I'm saying your new plan, but I feel like all these things are destined. Even the Five of Swords can be destined because your soul came down here to learn. You know, look at Earth as your classroom. Like, that's what I'm doing. I'm learning. I'm learning through my experiences. But I'm also learning when enough is enough. And that's what you're learning in that Six of Swords. You're saying no more. No more, no more, no more, no more. Hit the road, Jack. Don't you come back no more. Some of you, it's like you left a house. You left this abundance. And, and that's probably why I feel like you'll recoup it. You know, like, it's funny. I was thinking yesterday, I don't know why, but I was thinking, um, like, a lot of the relationships I was in, I didn't even bother to, like, fight for any of the material things except for like pictures you know like photo albums other than that it's just like i just whoever what wherever i was at whoever i was with i was just like you just keep it you know what i mean like there was a point in my life where i just you know material items didn't fulfill me and I feel like that's really when my spirituality opened up, too. All right. Well, let's keep going. You know, the hangman with the six of swords over it, it, it may not be an easy decision, right? This moving away from, again, toxic type energy. But again, you set yourself free, like at least your thoughts. But I feel like when you set yourself free, it's really opening you up to like all the blessing. It's like it kind of feels like this dark cloud's been hanging over you, but now the sun's coming out. But I feel like it was you who had to make these hard changes, you know, these difficult realizations. But then once you do, you put action behind it, and I feel like it is paying off. It's paying off. All right. Yeah, Virgo and me likes my cards nice and neat. Hmm. We have the two swords, you know, they both are in reverse. I'm going to flip them around. Two swords coming over the wheel. And then we have the seven of, I'm sorry, with the two of pentacles and the seven of pentacles. Okay. So, first of all, the two of pentacles to me, you know, they called the juggler's card, but I really feel like it's more about using your logical mind. So I know this knight is going to produce at least one pentacle here. Because this puts you in the question mode. This puts the ball in your court. Do I or don't I accept it? Coming over the wheel, it's it's destined. So you're going to feel it. And then it moves into the Seven of Pentacles, which I have to tell you, Seven of Pentacles, much like the Knight of Pentacles, first lesson is patience. That's why I often relate it back to like the apple tree. You know, like I'm not going to pick an apple before it's ripe. I need to have patience and allow to become right. And then I pick it. And it is juicy and it is good. So in the Seven of Pentacles, I feel like it's also your tree of life. You know, certain seeds have been planted at certain times. And now it feels like, okay, well, these seeds are coming to fruition. 
and also coming over the nine of wands, that kind of feels like a reward. You know what I mean? Like a spiritual reward for the willingness to really look within oneself and learn about oneself. That's really what it speaks about. You know, not judging oneself, but learning like, okay, you know, I can look back in my life and think about some of the stupid things I've done. But now that I know better, I do better. But I've learned a lot from those stupid experiences. I have learned a lot. You know, Scorpio, I feel like you may have been connected to someone or a situation that I feel like it's time, like it just ran its course. We have the moon, card of Pisces, ruler of Cancer. The moon can speak of uncertainties. The moon is very dreamy type energy. You know, one of the things the hangman, um, one of the reasons why maybe I was afraid to move forward because, you know, like I'm uncertain where it's going to go. Like, will this be good for me? I definitely got to say yes, because I don't feel like the Knight of Pentacles would be here otherwise. But maybe what it's saying is try not to project yourself too far out in the future. Like have these dreams, these goals. And really, I feel like and watch them come true. But the reason why I'm saying you can't project yourself too far out in the future, because today you're planting seeds. And, you know, you want to think about that. Like I'm plant like if I plant no seeds, I have no harvest. So I need to plant certain seeds. But I need to also learn to live in the present moment and enjoy what the present moment can give me. Well, hello, Ace of Wands. Over the reversal of that eight of swords. So setting yourself free? Absolutely. And this is about inspired action. You know, this this is, to me, this is a great omen that your spiritual team is certainly trying to help guide you. You know, the Eight of Swords, though, that is that is a self-created prison. That's man-made. You know what I mean? It's, it's a human condition where we put walls up. But because you put those walls down, that means you're trusting your intuition. Is really what it means. There definitely feels like there is a reward in that. And then the Ace of Wands coming over that. Inspired action. It's guidance. But it's for something that's going to definitely excite you. You know, don't forget we already have the Knight of Wands over there with the wheel. We have... hmm. Five of Wands. Five. Now we got four fives, but five of cups with the five of wands. I feel like we have to take a second and talk about that, especially with the six of swords right above that. So the five of wands talks about energy of fighting, drama. This is where, you know, it's interesting because in the five of cups, I may have wished someone could be a certain way, but it feels like it didn't turn out that way. But maybe that's, maybe again, that relationship, if it's a relationship, ran its course. Some of you, I feel like this is talking about, well, again, you have three wheels, so three wheels. So I feel like it's three wishes. But I do feel like, you know, the prior energy, drama, fighting, you know, in the Five of Wands, if I'm expecting someone to apologize for their action, chances are I'm not going to get it. But the thing is, I don't really need it because I feel like that's coming to an end. All 
All right, what else do we have here? We have the Eight of Pentacles. You have so many pentacles. And look at this, the Nine of Pentacles. Wow. That's independent success. This is seeing the fruits of your labor. You know what I love about the Nine of Pentacles? It is your hard work, but it's you reaping the benefits of that. This is a very independent nature. And it is mirroring the Five of Pentacles, where I don't feel so strong in that energy, but now you do. Interesting that the Eight of Pentacles comes right before that. The Eight of Pentacles really speaks about, it can talk about something new that's opening up uh, as it relates to your Pentacles. And this is the willingness to go into something as the apprentice and knowing that one day I will be the master teacher. Well, look how quickly that energy produces itself. Because in the Nine of Pentacles, I do feel like you are the master teacher. This is where I'm feeling strong on my own. You know, love or no love, I feel strong. I feel independent. Doesn't mean I don't want love. But I'm not really seeking it. What I'm really seeking is stability. Being able to take care of myself. Some of you, I definitely see you starting your own business. And I get that all the time. But I love the Eight of Pentacles before that. Because it's a reminder that you don't need to know everything. Right? You will learn it as you go. You will grow as you learn. And I definitely feel like you will. Somebody squealing their tires. You will eventually be that master teacher. I feel like your money is like, it is on its way up. And then we have justice. Hmm. Interesting. Coming over this king. Um, Carter Leo. Or Libra. I'm sorry. Coming under another major arcana of Pisces, ruler of cancer. Um, what am I looking at? Justice. Justice is about cutting ties. Some of you could have been dealing with some karmic type energy. And, you know, could not could have been not so great. But now I feel like this is talking about good karma coming your way. You know, this is literally just cutting ties to whatever and whoever is just leaving you in an unbalanced state anyway. I feel like the minute we cut the ties that justice asks us to, I feel immediately there's like balance. We find that balance where right now it's a little up or down. Justice is about making you whole again. I mean, this is great energy. You're doing anything in the law. If you're helping people in that arena. And I say the law, but it can be, you know, it doesn't have to mean like I'm an attorney. Um, I just may be helping people find their way. You know, it's bringing me back to that Queen of Pentacles, where I feel like is you. Where I called her my psychic detective. Well, let me tell you one of her specialties. And that is like reading between the lines. You know, and, and maybe that's why I'm, I'm feeling like law. But again, it doesn't have to mean like, you know, I work in a court of law or I am an attorney. Um, Queen of Pentacles, you know, you put a contract before her. She's able to pick out any of those hidden clauses. If someone's trying to get something over, like over me, uh, -uh. Queen of Pentacles is going to find it, point it out. You know, I feel like you've been working hard. 
I definitely feel that. I feel like you've been working hard. I feel like you are seeking a better life. Doesn't mean I want everything in my life to change, even though, again, it does feel like three changes. Um, or I can talk about two people who, uh, you know, live upon the same will or will. You know what I mean? It's like in divine timing. All right. We have the page of pentacles. Man, pentacles everywhere. And then we have the four of cups. Interesting. Four cups can talk about discontentment and boredom in one's life. Doesn't have to mean in all areas. It just means one thing. But there's something I'm unsatisfied with. Well, this person is being handed a cup. And this cup, I feel, is coming from the hand of God. You know, or divine, however you want to say it. And you have what I feel is your guardian angel right there. So I know this cup is coming from this night. And it's interesting because it's coming over these fives. First of all, the five cups. You know, maybe I've given someone a lot of my time, emotional energy, but it hasn't paid off. You know, something has you in this discontentment. Well, I know a little bit is because it feels like you've been dealing with a lot of drama potentially even fighting type energy. But I feel like you're taking it on an emotional level. But the Four of Cups is, is really about learning to use one's spiritual discernment. You know, as this cup comes towards me, it's, it's my spiritual self that's going to make that decision. Am I going to accept that cup? Or not. Well, literally, coming from the Knight of Pentacles, I would say, because I feel like you've cleared past energy, because I feel like now you can you're you're you can easily read people, and therefore I feel like it'd be very hard at this point to pull the wool over your eyes, because I feel like you've spiritually grown so much. I feel like, um, and listen, to really have this spiritual growth, sometimes it does take hard lessons. And we either get lost in that, you know, like the five of cups, woe is me. And it's, you know, many of us do for a period of time. But then that day where it's just like, okay, enough is enough. Right? Tired of feeling dissatisfied sad, unhappy. So the Four of Cups is bringing in this cup. The Ace of Wands inspired action. You know, it's like helping you, to, it's helping to guide your steps for you. And again, I feel like there's no need to project myself too far out in the future because it's the seeds that I'm going to be planting that are really going to determine my future. But I feel like your guardian angel is trying to help you in every way possible. You know, not just with your money, because your money feels very successful. Not only successful. Um, and listen, you may just be at the beginning of that. But this is because with the eight of pentacles, it could just be the beginning. And I say the beginning, but the beginning could be months, even a year. Um... But it's, it's what I'm learning through that energy. You know, to me, the Eight of Pentacles also answers a question. You know, can, how do I know I can be successful at something? Even because in the Eight of Pentacles, again, I'm going in as the apprentice. I don't feel like I know everything I need to know. But this is telling you, you don't need to know. You'll learn it. I, I promise you. You'll learn it as you go. And, you know, I feel Scorpio. I feel like you're one of those people who, like myself included, um, you learn more by hands on. So the question is, will something be successful? The answer is, as long as you're willing to put your focus there. 
And you can put your focus on more than one area. But wherever you put your focus is what you're going to grow. Okay. Um, what do I want to look at? I mean, I feel like your pentacles are off the chart. And by the way, this is after losing. Like, you know, where I feel like I've lost maybe some money or I've, you know, cut ties with someone and it's affected my money. Um, this is you recouping it. But listen, you're recouping it on your own. And that doesn't mean that, you know, you're going to be single. But you. this is you being independent. This is you making your money. This is you um, reaping the benefits of your hard work. We have the weirder noises outside. Now I feel like there's fireworks. Okay. Also, I want to just talk about the Page of Pentacles for a second. Page of Pentacles really speak, it speaks about a learning experience. And I feel like this is talking about like your whole life. Like the things you've been learning. Um, and I feel like some of it, you know, it almost feels like it had to start with you questioning yourself. Questioning your beliefs. You know, am I living life according to my terms? Or have I just been in lower vibrational energy? And maybe you felt stuck for a while. But I, but I don't feel like you're stuck anymore. I do feel you set yourself free. And I feel like, again, that's what gets everything moving. So everything that you've been through, you know, has been a learning experience. Even the hard things, especially the hard things. You know, I feel like those of us who have had difficult lives, and I've had a difficult life, I've had many blessings also. Um, but... You know, I use my past experiences often in a reading. And I'm one of those people that don't really like to talk about myself. You, I mean, I feel like you guys know me better than anyone. Um, well, other than my daughter and Sam. But I, I do. I feel, like, I feel like I tell you more than anyone. But I can see where my past experiences and how I've overcome them. I can see where they can benefit by me sharing that information. That's the only reason I share it. Um, and I'm saying that because I know just in my own life, it is some of the most difficult periods in my life where, you know, I was able to set myself free. And sometimes setting myself free meant I, you know, there had to be movement. There was no other way around it. But again, taking those experiences, using them to your benefit. A lot of growth. There's a lot of growth on this table. All right. I think I want to come over to the Knight. The Knight of Pentacles. who's coming over the Five of Cups. And the Four of Cups. I remember in the Four of Cups, you are being offered a cup. And this is a cup of fulfillment. But I feel like there's a few things going on here. First of all, I feel like you're receiving epiphanies, probably like never before. I definitely feel like you're receiving guidance on like the next steps to take if you're seeking that. I definitely feel like your money is probably better than it's been in a long time. And I feel like it's only going to go up from here. I definitely feel some of you doing your own thing. And um, feeling good about that. I feel like no matter what, what your reading is saying is, it's like there's like Scorpio is different. Scorpio is becoming so much more independent 
proud of what they're doing. And understanding that, you know, if I keep letting certain energy exist, then will I ever have the changes that I'm really seeking? I feel like you've come to clarity with that. All right, so we're looking at the night. Look at this. The Two of Cups, but not just the Two of Cups. Hello, Ace of Cups. So, these wheels. One of these wheels is talking about your money. And one of these wheels is talking about love. But not just any old love. You know, how interesting, because it's also coming over that Five of Pentacles. And that Five of Pentacles, I'm either going to... It's either woe is me, or I'm going to say enough is enough. And what shows when the person makes that change? Those two cups, here they are. But not just the soulmates, the ace of cups connected to them. Wow. Right over your guardian angel energy. Who better to help direct love into your life? Who better? That's pretty amazing right there. And then that Ace of Wands also. You know, we have the Knight of Wands up here over the one wheel. And that does talk about passion, desire. Um, and I feel like I feel like it's talking about your whole life, though. You know, I feel like my Scorpio right now is feeling so much stronger in their lives. Doesn't mean everything is like set yet. You know, maybe not all of these dreams have come about yet. But I feel like as long as you're willing to, you know, and this is why I feel like in a tarot reading, why my readings are long. Because, you know, we can look at the star, then we can look at the two of cups and the ace of cups and be like, yay, that's beautiful. Soulmates coming into my life. But the truth of the matter is it's coming in because you're ready for it now. Remember that knight of that knight of pentacles who is ushering it in comes at the right time, not before and not after. You setting yourself free just from anything that has been holding you back, even your own limited ideas, you know, or I don't know if ideas is the right word like your limited thoughts about what it is that you can do in this world or how your life can look. You know, the Six of Swords is another energy where you don't want to ignore it because it is the realization of what has been toxic, who has been toxic, and saying no more. No more, no more. Even if it means that I had to take a little bit of a hit within my financial house. I told you you're going to recoup it. And here you are in the Nine of Pentacles recouping it. But who is the major benefactor again? You. You know, what a perfect time to fall in love when you yourself are feeling strong within yourself. When you yourself have put down any of those walls that could have blocked it. And listen, maybe some of you just it's like, I just didn't want love at that time. And that is, of course, everyone's personal choice. But the wheel, three times, destiny. Definitely, number one, again, is talking about an increase in your finances. But it is because of your hard work. So that's one. Number two, first of all, I feel like you yourself take everyone else out of the picture. I feel like you're feeling so much better. Doesn't it mean that there's not, you know, that life is perfect? It just means now you know better how to handle it. You definitely know, or at least I feel like you're claiming like, you know, you're saying to people, if 
like I am on, I am on this path and I really don't want anyone to interrupt it. I feel it. Like I feel that I'm on the right path. I may not know at this moment, will it be a hundred percent successful? But remember, it's the seeds that you're planting today that will determine your harvest in the fall. But I feel like this is saying you've already put in a lot of hard work. You're cutting ties to the things and the people who are no longer serving you. definitely learning from all of it and now you're being inspired to take these next action steps so you have a soulmate that's on this wheel and the soulmate brings out the ace of cups well my friends that's unconditional love and it kind of makes me feel like you probably have loved before now, I'm not saying in this lifetime. I won't leave that off the table. Um, but listen, <clears throat> at this point, the way I feel that you're feeling, I feel like, you know, the determining factor of whether I allow love in again is going to be their vibration. So if this is someone who's coming to you like, like wobbly and uncertain and you can just feel there's going to be problems, then just shh, don't even open that door. Because I feel like this is going to be very clear. First of all, I feel like passion will probably be undeniable. I definitely feel like this is two people who sit upon each other's will. You know, they're destined to be. It doesn't guarantee us it they will be, right? Because, again... In the Nine of Pentacles, I'm feeling pretty strong on my own. But that Four of Cups, the cup is being offered to you. Literally, here is that cup. Literally, coming from your guardian angel. And this is not a one-time deal. I feel like this is the perfect place to bring in the romance angels over, um, first of all, the Ace of Wands, the Two of Cups, Soulmate, the Ace of Cups, Unconditional Love, especially because it sits on your wheel. This is probably love that... Um, you probably have loved in previous lives. You definitely know each other soul to soul. And to me, that means there's certain recognition with this type of love. You know, they feel different than probably anyone I've loved before. And it doesn't even mean I just fall in love right away. Though in a way, it's kind of showing that. All right. Let's take the romance angels right there. Hmm. New love. A new person has stirred your romantic feelings. Well, yes, they have. And by the way, I do want you to recognize that this is at the end of the reading. Again, it's coming about because of the changes you have made. It's coming about because you have put down your walls. And again, that two of pentacles puts the ball in your court. So, of course, you don't have to say yes. But I don't know how you could say no at the same time. New love. Healing family issues. Your love life benefits as you forgive your parents. Hmm. And then look at this. True love. Well, I already knew that. This, oh my gosh, is a romance of a lifetime. This 
is a romance of a lifetime. And it's a true love. But it's a new love in this lifetime. Now, I'm not going to leave off the table that it could it could talk about um oh um what was I gonna say? I forget what I was gonna say. Mm. Oh, I was talking about, you know, someone you may have loved in this lifetime. You know, because it, it is a little bit reminding me of, like, Sam and, and my story. Um, and how we came together. And I'm not going to go through all that because I know many of you already know that story. Um, but, you know, we came back together 40 years after the fact as new love. So we certainly weren't those teenagers, <clears throat> you know, from when we first fell in love. And then we went, you know, we broke up and then went our certain way, our each our own way. I mean, I moved out of state. Um, but then one faithful day, my telephone rang and that changed. It changed my life. You know, first it changed my love life. And it didn't change much else, right? I still work, kept my job, this and that. But eventually, it changed my whole life. And I say that because eventually, after five years, I made that decision to move in with Sam. And that was almost five years ago. And it is true love. And, you know, it's funny how I said I wasn't going to even talk, talk about my story. But, you know, I just want you to understand that there are different vibrational loves. And, you know, we can certainly fall in love with people when they're in a lower vibration, we're in a lower vibration. And that's where there's a lot of problems in a relationship. And I'm either going to learn from that. Or I'm going to be kind of like the Eight of Swords. I'm just going to build walls up. Well, because I feel like you have been learning. You've been on this learning period. Maybe the last um, cycle. But I feel like this is really like. Because even healing family issues. Forgiving your parents. Interesting. That's just a weird place for that to come out. However. Some of you, this could literally mean like you left the homestead. A new person has stirred your romantic feelings. And then this is the romance of a lifetime. Amen to that. All right, um, let's just keep these right down here. And what else do I want to look at? So, I feel like we have your money sector covered. Again, you know, you took a hit, it feels like, but it, but I feel like you're recouping. You know, this could talk about like working for working for the man and, you know, maybe I lost a job or what have you. Um, and, you know, in that time period, it can feel like the end of the world. I've been there also. And I have to say, um, I'm someone who when I lost my job, I started a business. I started my own business and I went to work for myself. So I am in the nine of pentacles energy also does stand for Virgo, which I am. Um, but I'm saying this because it's it, because I do feel like you're recouping. So I feel like one of the wheels is talking about your finances only getting better and better and better. But remember, you know, let's say you're just beginning at something 
and where your worry lies is, can I be successful? The Nine of Pentacles says, so does the Eight of Pentacles. You know, put your focus there and you're going to grow it. But listen, this Eight of Pentacles is also mirroring all this love over here. So I feel like that also applies to that. Can this love be successful? Focus upon it. Give it your attention. I don't know how you can't. If it's talking about anybody old, again, they're showing in a different vibration. And it must be of a high vibration. Otherwise, the Knight of Pentacles wouldn't usher it in. All right. So, I'm not even sure what I want to look at, but I feel like let's just kind of go down the middle. Five of Swords. There's that toxicity. But look what follows it. Beautiful. The Eight of Cups. That tells me that some of this toxic type energy had to do with like emotional situations in your life. Certainly could talk about love. But this is you finding clarity within your emotional house. You know, if you just look at the image, this person is leaving. They're heading towards the Nine of Cups. And that's inner fulfillment. Some of you may feel like you haven't quite reached it yet, but you're on your way. Interesting how their big moon right there and it's coming right by the moon. So the eight, pen, the eight of cups is, is you allowing yourself to have a new beginning. It's you telling anyone around you, you know, who carries any type of toxic energy. And that just means they're kind of working against you instead of for you. That means like if, if I'm like bouncing ideas off of someone, they're probably telling me, oh, you won't be successful. But then they don't know you. Then they don't know you. All right, let's follow that a little bit more. And then we'll bring out Mother Mary. Well, hello, Ace of Pentacles. Just what the Knight of Pentacles promised. So look at this, the Ace of Pentacles, the Ace of Wands, and somewhere under there, somewhere under, okay, right there, the Ace of Cups that is attached to the soulmates. So that Ace of Pentacles means that something is coming into your physical world. That's exactly what the Knight of Pentacles means. You know, like, in a way, it's something that feels like a blessing, but it's well-deserved. Funny, you got three wills and you got three aces. Look at that. Look at that. The Knight of Pentacles looking right back at that Ace of Pentacles like, I did my job. I did, you did your job and now I'm doing my job. You said, I'm not going to let life and the problems hold me back and stop me from producing some of these wishes that I have. And the Knight of Pentacles is like, baby, that's what I've been waiting for. You know, this Knight of Pentacles is coming around two eights. The Eight of Cups, emotional clarity, moving to inner harmony. The Eight of Swords, self-created prison. But you set yourself free. Instead of woe is me, you learned from these experiences. You know, I also love that the Knight of Pentacles, it, it, it like brings right away this Ace of Pentacles. And it also is attached to your emotional house. So to me, this is very clear. Like, you're receiving, you know, I'm going to say blessings. But I'm going to say each and every one of these blessings are so well-deserved. 
Like, they're not coming because you're doing nothing in your life. They're coming because you yourself have been evolving in your life. You want better. And now you're going to start seeing better. All right. I feel like I am not going to push it any further than that. So let's go ahead and bring in Mother Mary over. Do you know, you know, I want to say a gorgeous reading, but there are a lot of lessons in this reading. And again, this is why my readings are longer, because I want to give you a roadmap. You know what I mean? Like if, if we never realize that if we don't make certain changes or we no longer accept certain type of energy, that everything remains the same like an Aussie song. Um, but when I start making these changes, even if they're small, it's like you're telling the universe, okay, I'm open to what is next. But you have some particular goals in mind. You know, I feel like the star is saying, like there's certain things that you'd like to see come into your life. And I feel like one of them is feeling independent. Another is your money. And your money is just increasing. Again, I felt right away that whatever money you lost, you're recouping it. And, well, hello, true love. I mean, this is a love of a lifetime. Scorpio, what we reading? Interesting, we have father. And I say that because the romance angels brought out um, forgiving your parents. It's funny because my daughter is the Scorpio and I'm like, oh boy, is, she, is it about me? Um, though her and I, like, you know, we're very open with each other. So, father. My true father is God in heaven who shines healing light upon me. My birth father and our relationship. Health. My prayers for healing miracles have been heard and answered. Some of you could certainly have concerns around a father and their health. You know, even if you don't have a perfect relationship, I still feel like, you know, if there's any health issues, you probably have been praying. And then, last but not least, boundaries. I am clear and honest with others about my expectations. Well, yes, you are. And those who cross those boundaries are the ones you're cutting out. Like, here are my boundaries. If you cross them, you got to go. You know, and these boundaries aren't, like, impossible. They're real boundaries. Like, they're real, like, you know, like I've been working hard in my life. And I have no interest of returning back to some of these hard lessons. And by the way, with judgment here, or justice here, some of this could have been karmic lessons. And I feel like with karmic lessons, once you've learned them, you learned them for eternity. And I feel like you learn them, you know, it reminds me of like, let's say I'm in a relationship or in a marriage and there's just fighting and fighting and fighting. You know, that's kind of what father reminds me of. Like, I'm just going to use myself again. Sorry. But like when I was growing up, like my parents fought tooth and nail. And us as kids, we would sit on the steps and just cry. And it was difficult. And let me tell you, I was a daddy's little girl. I loved my father. But I saw that part of him. I saw that part of him. And, you know, unfortunately, when I was young, I ended up getting married. And, you know, I don't regret it because I had two beautiful children. But. Man, was he a lot like my father. And not the good parts. Now, it doesn't mean he doesn't, you know, I don't know what to say. 
you know, because he is my daughter's father and it's like, you know, she's a Scorpio. So I hate putting him down. But in my life as a romantic partner, he was terrible. He was the worst. And that may, and you know, some of you, it may ring a bell as in like, I could have been in relationships, you know, that, that didn't work out or were difficult because, you know, some way, somehow they could have reminded you, reminded you of your father. Now I'm saying all that, but I also feel the energy of like, if some of you have been praying about your father, I feel like the prayers are being heard. And then boundaries, I feel like, are outside of that. It's just you sending boundaries in your life. You know, once you leave certain toxic energy, why would you want to repeat it? You don't. And I feel like you're very clear about that. Scorpio, what a reading. What a reading. I mean, abundance, yes. Changes, yes, but they're all for the better. And love, ah, oh, of the highest. Of the highest. True love. And a romance of a lifetime. It's at the end, but I feel like that's exactly where it fits. You know, what the hangman's been seeking, the hangman is finding. So you're finding your way. And I just feel so proud of you. And I feel so happy for you. And I do want to remind you, you know, like if you're way back in the beginning, you may be like, there's no way this is going to happen. Yeah. Well, this is kind of showing you. You know, that's why I call my readings potentials not predictions because you have free will and no one can come in between that so the potential of reaching this is very high when i say no more to this toxic energy when i start believing in myself i put effort within my creative house you're gonna see the blessings from that when i put those walls down you're going to see love. It just all feels natural. What a beautiful reading. All right. I'm going to leave it there. Three wheels. Well, I know two of those wheels are talking about love and not, again, I just find this kind of amazing how they came out together. They actually came this way soulmates and then the ace of cups so to me that says that you've loved each other before maybe not in this lifetime but soul recognition and you know interesting how i always say take love slow but there's going to be this recognition you're going to feel the difference within this love it doesn't mean it's perfect nobody's perfect but it's coming in perfect timing. That's what the Knight of Pentacles speaks about. I come at the right time. And that just means I come at a time where you can look at it and appreciate it versus saying no way. Of course, the choice will always be yours, but this is a romance of a lifetime. This is true love. And as signified by that Ace of Cups and the Soulmates. So I could go on and on and on. Um, but I'm not going to. I'm going to let that be. Uh, as always, I want to thank you. I want to say happy birthday again to those celebrating a birthday. Um, I love you so much. I really do. I thank you for everything you do for this channel. Um, I really do. Uh, you know, you, you make me grateful just to be able to do this. It's, it's because of you. So know that I am internally grateful for you. 
I do feel like we're all one big soul family. I really do. And I feel like new people coming in, they're just part of our soul family is just now finding us. So welcome, welcome, welcome. All right, guys. I love you. I thank you. Um, I hope this is the beginning of everything for you. I really do. I love you. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.